Good morning, good afternoon and good evening wherever you are in the world. You're very welcome to this webinar this afternoon which is now beginning. It is the rise of the robots or as I've subtitled it, a new digital workforce or how robotics will revolutionize your organization. I'd like to welcome everybody to the webinar this afternoon, but I'd especially like to welcome, I can see a number of twofold customers uh, have joined the session. You're especially welcome, thank you so much. Um, for those of you on the call that aren't currently twofold customers, shame on you, but don't worry, we can rectify the situation very easily. Give me a call after the webinar and I'll be delighted to talk about how you can join the thousands of uh, twofold customers and the benefits that they get. Um, let's move into the presentation this afternoon. Unless you've been living in a hole in the ground, you can't fail but have noticed all the press reports that are coming out, out about the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, natural language processing and that robots this is the one that i see more and more robots are coming for our jobs really are they actually coming for our jobs and is this the first time we've seen a revolution i think we should look at history to see what history tells us because if you go back in time ever since information was able to be captured in a reliable way from the beginning of the printing press back in the 15th century we've seen revolution after revolution you know, in the 18th or 19th century, we all flocked from the fields where we all worked on farms to come and work in factories. And then guess what? Factories became automated and latterly they have robots. And we flocked from factories to offices. And then offices became more automated with computers. And we thought that all of our jobs were going to go to computers. But we actually ended up working more personal computers. And then at the turn of the century, we thought all of our jobs were going to be outsourced to go to lower cost economies around the world. Every time these revolutions have come along, we thought they're going to be coming and gunning for our jobs. And they haven't. It's just changed the way that we work. But that's not to underestimate the revolution that we're about to face today. We are on the cusp of a new digital revolution and that's what I want to share with you uh, this afternoon how robots are going to change your organization so I guess to put this into context I'd like you to consider the challenge that you have within your own organization how many different systems do you have to interact with do you interact with email office applications do you have mainframes, green screen applications, client server or web applications? Do you have core back end systems like HR and pension and payroll and accounting and ERP systems and CRM systems? And for your industry, do you have line of business systems? Maybe you're in insurance or banking or healthcare or whatever it is that you do. You've probably got a plethora of different systems that you need to interact with. And in order to perform all of these tasks, organizations have taken on more people. But with more people, they're linking into more sources of not only internal uh, uh, applications, but they're having to link into customer systems and supplier systems. And, and they're having massive amounts of data that having to move and interact with these. And in the context of a post GDPR world, we're having to be cognizant of the rules and regulations around how data is moved around. But typically these systems are disconnected. I spoke to one of my customers recently. Um, they're in a large organization. I spoke to the head of IT. They manage an estate of 360 different business applications. Imagine that 300 plus applications and they're all disconnected and, and they're having to uh, think of ways to join those up and make the experiences better across the organization. And we live in a world where people don't care what your challenges are. We've all got high expectations. We live in a 24 by seven world where you're only as good as the best experience we've seen on a mobile phone or the best web experience. Your organization is always being judged by who is the best. Um, out there. So how do you meet this challenge? You know, to do this additional work and to provide excellent service, do you take on even more people? Do you take on more cost of having more developers integrating different backend systems? Or, or do you try and make the problem go away and outsource it uh, to, to, to more organizations? I guess they're one response, but they're only really putting the problem off. What you actually need to do is to rethink it and do a step change. You need to perhaps adopt a new technology. And that technology, I believe, is robotic process automation. Now, here's a fantastic quote 
uh, from a, a guy called Frank Casal, and he's the founder and chairman emeritus of a wonderfully named organization, an institute for robotic process automation. Heck, if a technology has got an institute named after it, then you know it's a pretty serious trend that your organization needs to be aware of. And Frank came out with what I think is a great little quote. It's less about the latest trend in software, and he's right, because this technology has been around for decades. It's less about the latest trend in software, and it's more about the new digital version of the white collar worker. It's a reinvention of how we get work done. And hopefully you'll see through the next 20 minutes is how we can start to revolutionize some of that drone and drudge work that you've asked your employees or you yourself may have to do within your organization and offload that to a more automated, faster and speedier way of getting work done. So today's digital workforce, if you do deploy robots, then we've got customers that have built hundreds of robots over the last 10, 20 years. Um, thousands of robots, tens of thousands. I think our largest customer using this technology, 30,000 robots they've built um, in production. And robots have the ability 24 by seven to see if an email's come in, to read it and respond to it, and link to 10 or 15 different backend systems and, and get data to between in a secure and automated way without ever making a mistake. And that's what smart and smarter robots can do. And maybe in the future, you know, those robots can go a step further and by using natural language processing and cognitive computing and predictive analytics and machine learning, perhaps they can start making decisions uh, like a human would or start doing work even before it needs to be done um, because they're aware of circumstances. But at the moment, let's just take one step at a time. Let's get rid of that horrible drudge work uh, that you've got within your organization and get ready uh, for perhaps more advanced uh, technologies as they come downstream uh, later on. And that technology that's available now, and you know, here the Ovum Group calls it, consider robotic process automation. And I think they've got a really non-jargonized way of describing this. It's a lower cost, less disruptive way to rapidly automate processes. Great, there's no jargon in that. A lower cost, less disruptive way to rapidly automate processes. And they suggest that these have been previously out of the reach of more capital and investment intensive approaches. You know, if you had to try and join together 360 different back end systems with a team of developers, I'd hate to think what the cost would be. And that's why organizations just can't do it. If you can build a robot in a few minutes that can start to join these things up, well, then you can uh, start to automate these processes. And I guess that's what the Over Group is getting at um, here. So I guess. I like to look at it through this simple diagram. Currently, technology like robotic process automation can do the handwork, what you're currently keying in to your keyboard of your laptop. And later on, as this technology advances, it can then start to do the head work or the cognitive work and, uh, or, or, or what I call the shoulder top. Um, so it's the laptop at the moment, and eventually it might move to the shoulder top, your brain. Um, but at the moment, let's just get rid of the hard work that people um, are working on. So I guess it's that old adage of let's work smarter, not harder. And we've seen nearly two decades of results. You know, on average, <clears throat> organizations that deploy robotic process automation would see an increase of capacity from their existing teams of between 35 and 50 percent. I'm going to share some case studies that blow those numbers out of the water, you know, deliver 25 to 50 percent increase in savings. But do that without making a single mistake, 100 percent data accuracy. A robot will not miskey something. I'm a human being. I'm fallible. I might get tired. I might be emotional for, for whatever reason. There might be other things going on in my life. I'm not designed to sit there 24 by 7, cutting and pasting data between one system and another or manually keying information in. I will, on average, it's proven a human makes between 6 and 7% mistakes. Robots just don't do that. And if you can deploy robots, you can slash processing times by considerable amounts. Here, we're suggesting between 30 and 50%, although so many case studies uh, blow those numbers apart. Um, as well. So if you need to control cost, check. <clears throat> That's exactly what robotic process automation does. If you need to improve accuracy, check. That's exactly what this technology is designed to do. 
And if your organization needs to embrace the competitive edge, check, check, that's where we are. You know, if you can start thinking about what you can do rather than I've got no time to do anything because I'm too busy doing the job I've got, that's, that's the freedom of being agile. And that's what we can bring you by giving you tools that free up the time uh, from what you're currently um, doing. So <clears throat> we've got a proven track record of success. The technology I'm about to demonstrate and share with you this afternoon has been around nearly as long as I have, nearly 20 years. I'd like to say that the technology has been around longer than I have. I'd, I'd like to say I'm younger than I am, but I'm not. I've been in industry slightly longer than two decades. Um, but this technology has got nearly 20 years of experience. Tens of thousands of customers are using the technology from our chosen vendor, Kofax. You know, and within whatever industry you're in, we can probably point to tens, hundreds, maybe thousands of case studies of other organizations that have faced the same challenges that you have and have found solutions and answers. And we'd love to put you in touch with them and share with you exactly what you can do. I'm paid to say this stuff is wonderful. Our customers aren't. They can share with you exactly what it's done for their organization. And they will share with you compelling results, um, so compelling um, that they're evangelizing about what this technology does within their organization and why this tool that I'm about to share with you is industry leading and winning plaudits and awards um, wherever it goes. So let's stop talking about it and properly introduce it. What I'm sharing with you this afternoon is something called Kapow from Kofax. And yes, if you've heard of Batman, it is the same Kapow that you see um, it pop up in the bubble. And Kapow, this technology is a simple visual robotic design environment. So simple, even I can build a robot. And I'll prove that in a minute by building one for you as part of this webinar. And if I can build it, that means your users can build it and you don't have to have external consultants coming in uh, to, 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 to work on these uh, within your organization. And this technology can link to however many applications you've got or systems, 10, 20, 50, hundreds of different backend systems to join them together and allow you at the speed of thought to start improving your processes or deliver new services to staff or customers. And because it's been around for decades, it's enterprise class, it's bulletproof. It's enabled you to scale and deploy, as we said, you know, a customer with 30,000 robots, they couldn't do that unless this stuff is enterprise class, but it's built for business users. It's, it's built for you to be able to solve uh, your own problems. It's been around for decades with hundreds of thousands of robots um, in production. So I guess at that point, let's stop talking about it and let's have a look at it. Why don't we actually ask me uh, to actually start building a robot? So let, let's do that now and I'll start building a robot. So my challenge for this particular robot <clears throat> is a rather mundane job. Um, here on the right hand, here on, on, on my uh, screen, which I'll move over to the right hand side, um, is a web page. And, and within this web application, if I go to this particular um, sub page, are some stock indices, Shanghai, Nikkei, etc., um, and some prices. Please don't worry, they're not live numbers. Uh, this is a demonstration system. If you've got stocks and shares in those indices and they're not the numbers you're expecting, please don't panic. Um, these are for demonstration purposes. But my job. Uh, within my organization is I have to go on a periodic basis, go in and update the date and then go out to, you know, an external website and copy that information and paste it into a spreadsheet and do that for all of them and do it every five minutes, 10 minutes every day. Oh, my word. What a mind-numbingly boring job to have to do. And I'm sorry if you're listening to this and you have to do jobs like this, but trust me, I'm going to be your best friend because I'm going to show you a technology that's going to remove that and allow you to be freed up to do what you're best at, which is being a human being and thinking uh, and adding value to your organization. So I'm just going to close out of this uh, particular spreadsheet because I'm going to allow the robots to interact uh, with it. And I'm going to just go back to the original URL um, of this web page, and I'm just going to copy it um, and we'll have a look at that um, being built in a robot. So I've now got the robot design environment up in front of me. And guess what? It doesn't doesn't look scary. You know, we've got a few screens at the top. We're going to build the workflow of putting that information into the spreadsheet. And in the middle, we're going to see the Excel sheet. Uh, and on the right hand side, we're going to start seeing the data move backwards and forwards. So let's start building a robot. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a process that I do on a regular basis, which is opening up that spreadsheet. 
And that's it. I've done it. I've put that snippet in and I've built a number of stages. And this this process opens up that spreadsheet and loads it into memory so that I can actually see that uh, uh, spreadsheet within the robot without having to open up the spreadsheet and have an Excel sheet opening or even work. Oh, could you imagine a robot that needed a virtual machine with Excel running on it that had to open up Excel on a virtual machine? That'd be crazy. Um, surely you wouldn't look at any technology like that. That'd be absolute madness. You need a technology that can work on Excel natively uh, within itself, even down to um, I've got the ability to start putting information into that uh, robot, uh, sorry, into that Excel sheet, and I've put uh, today's date um, in there. So let's go on and complete the end of this robot. So I'm going to introduce a new step. So I'll create a new action step, and now I want to open up, I want to load a page, and I want to load that web page. So I'm just going to paste in uh, the URL of that web page that I loaded, and as I move on from that step um, in the robot, now in my window, I can see that web page. How easy was that? I've still got the spreadsheet if I want to click on it, but if I click on this tab, I've got this web page. And if I click on the finance uh, button, can you see the robots already built that into its process? So as I, the user, interact with this spreadsheet, the robot's building itself. I'm not doing any hard work or coding. It's just doing it incredibly simple and straightforward as I go along. So now all I need to do is just start extracting the information from this, I guess, it's a table. Now, if we've got anyone that's coding or anyone that understands HTML, you can, if you want to, go under the application, go to the Windows uh, tree, or in this case, because it's HTML, go to uh, the HTML view. And if you know that it's a table, you could click on the table element and Guess what? You've now selected that table. But let's say you're not a techie and you just click somewhere in the table and you just go out a couple of tags. And now you've done exactly the same thing. You've selected that table, but you've done it in a codeless way. And what I want to start doing is extracting rows from this table, but from the second row, because the top row um, is uh, just the information titles of this table. So I want to loop through this table for each table row, excluding the first row. Wow, that was hard, wasn't it? And look, I've built the step up here in the robot. And as I step through, look, it goes through that table and it starts extracting that row of information. Incredibly simple and straightforward. So now all I need to do is go in here and I want to extract this text, extract the text into a variable. And I want to extract this number, extract this number into a variable called stock price, which I can reformat if I don't like how it looks, but I'm happy with how that looks for now for speed. I'll leave it as it is. So I've extracted the symbol, I've extracted the price. Now I need to go and bung it in the spreadsheet. So I'll go back to the spreadsheet and uh, I'm under Shanghai. So I'll go in there and I'm gonna set the contents of this cell based on that variable that I created called stock price. There it is, stock price, click on okay. Bang, it's done it, it's put it in there. Now, obviously I'm doing this manually, but the robot after this session is gonna do this automatically, or rather automatically, I won't get too corny, um, but uh, um, we can see that it it, it does it in, 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 in an automated uh, fashion. So I guess I could go through and manually put the uh, data in the other four columns, but what I'm gonna do, because I captured the name of the stock market, I'm gonna just look at this row above uh, this webinar header row to see if I've got the stock symbol for this particular header and put the data um, in it. So I do that very simply by just using a finder and I'm going to use it by the header row and that header row I created for this webinar was called webinar and I'm going to look up within there um, the stock symbol and that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are in the world, I've just built, completed and built uh, my first robot. And if I go to the end of this particular robot step and now start stepping through, you'll see it start putting all of that information um, into that robot. And the only thing that I'd done beforehand was I'd written a step that writes all of this out um, to the Excel spreadsheet, which was just, again, another simple drop down step right um, to file. So let's test it. Let's see if this robot that I've built actually works. So I'll go into a debug mode and I'll press run. And this robot's now going uh, opening up the spreadsheet. It's already opened the spreadsheet. It's now going out to the internet, looking at that, delving down to that finance page and extracting it. 
I can't even talk fast enough to say, to say and keep up with what the robot's doing. So let's run it again um, so we can see what's happening. The robot's opening up the Excel spreadsheet, opening up the web page, extracting all of that stock market information and writing that spreadsheet back to the file. I'll tell you what, let's do it one more time just for luck. Three times lucky. Three is the magic number. Three times it's now gone and run that information. Imagine having to cut and paste that three times for four rows of data. And just to prove that it's worked, if I open up that Excel spreadsheet and open up the uh, spreadsheet that I had before, look, there's the three rows of data, dated and timed, and the information's been updated and it's all been graphed uh, for me uh, within this spreadsheet. And no humans uh, had to be hurt uh, in the making of this spreadsheet. It was very simple and it was very straightforward. And that's how your work can be revolutionized. Because if you're sitting there keying data into and between Excel, between different systems, databases, external portals, a robot can do that for you and make your life so much easier. So I guess the final thing to do now is to promote that robot to live, put it up into um, a live environment, which I've just done. Let's go and have a look at it. It's now running on, the, it's available to run um, on the server. And there it is, there's Tim's robots. Uh, there's the one that we called webinar. And now I can literally just say, when do I want that robot to run? Do I want it to run every minute, every second? every five minutes, every 10 minutes, every hour, overnight? Or do I want it to run on a condition? Maybe if something updates in our CRM system or our accounting system or our line of business system, something updates and then that causes the robot uh, to run. Maybe I want to call this robot from another system. I'll show you that in a moment. Or maybe I want to press a function key um, on my keyboard to run this robot. But if, as I said, I want to call that robot from another system, I haven't written a single line of code, but this robot has now created an API, an application programming interface, that if I click on it, I can see the JavaScript needed to call that robot or the C-sharp code. So you can just cut and paste that into your application and that will now run that robot as if it was a full integration. How easy and amazing uh, was that? A total wow moment. APIs, RESTful interfaces, or indeed um, SOAP calls um, that I could use. Uh, for that as well. So, you know, SOAP interfaces or web service calls, really as simple as that. Um, I'd be delighted to share more of this uh, later on, but let's get back and finish up uh, the webinar in terms of what we wanted to cover um, this afternoon. So I've given you a demonstration, but you've seen how easy it is to build a robot. Therefore, you can understand how our customers have built hundreds and thousands of robots um, in production. So, those of you that are twofold customers, and I've thanked you for joining earlier, you'll know that robots is just one of many things uh, that we do uh, for, for our customers and sits in a broader technology stack for whatever industry uh, you're in. And you'll know that we have the ability to capture and understand documents, be they emailed or scanned, um, uh, you know, Citrix screens. We can read and understand the information that's on them. You know, is that an invoice or a credit note? Is it a complaint letter? Is it a customer trying to do a change of address? We can read and understand it and get that data into your back end systems or allow robots to interact uh, with that. And we'd be delighted to share that with you um, later on. In fact, I'm going to get more into that on a later seminar um, that I'll introduce you to, a webinar rather, that I'll introduce you towards uh, the end of this particular session. But please don't take our word for it. As you can probably tell, yes, I'm passionate. Yes, I'm excited about this technology, but I'm paid to say this stuff is wonderful. Our customers and analysts aren't. You know, here's uh, Forrester, uh, a, a globally respected uh, industry analyst who said that Kofax acquired Kapow for its data integration tools, but found that the real crown jewels in this technology was its robotic processing engine. And I'm not going to argue with them. But let's look at some some other customers and see what they've done with this technology. Here's a large European bank. Now, they used to have teams of people doing something called KYC, know your customer investigations, and they'd have to pop out to internal and ex external systems, 10, 20, maybe 30 different systems uh, and sources of data to go and check that someone was bona fide and the kind of person that that organization would want to deal with and set up an account for. And those checks used to take, on average, 15 minutes per customer that they wanted to onboard. Now they've built a robot that does that in 90 seconds, 90 seconds. 
So the customer service has gone through the roof. The customer isn't waiting for Teams. The robot is able to get back to them within two minutes and say that their account um, is able to be set up. And they've got anti-money laundering checks that used to take 20 minutes and are now done uh, in a little over two minutes. Arrow Electronics, I, I love this quote. They saved 850 hours a month of manual invoice and quote processing. Now I divided 850 hours by 24 and that works out to me that they're saving 35 days in a 31 day month. That's amazing. Um, I guess that's probably because they've got multiple people, but you know, huge amounts of time save, saved for that organization doing a manual job of keying manual invoice and quote data into backend systems and between systems. But look at this point below, that's done now with 100% data accuracy. A robot never makes a mistake. How awesome is that? Pitt, Ohio. Wow. I'm going to just take a minute. Just, just think about that for a minute, what's being said here. Just imagine they're saying in that the results of their deployment of this technology has reclaimed 90 to 95 percent of some of their employees' time. Can you imagine 90 or 95 percent of your time being given back to you? to actually do more value added and more important tasks. That's the power of this technology. And that's allowed this organization to be far more responsive uh, to their customers and to give their staff a far happier and enjoyable workplace. Davis Turner, you know, they're in the logistics uh, industry, moving packages around and they dealt with a lot of partner organizations and to just track a shipment, they'd have to link into multiple different back end systems of their partners to track where a particular package or a shipment was. Now the robots do that automatically and they're able to track over a thousand percent more shipments than they did before. So they're immediately more responsive to customers and they haven't had to add a single member of staff. Whilst we're talking about uh, staff, let's look at Delta Dental. Two people can now do the work that previously required several teams to actually perform that. And processing went from weeks to days, which is why their return on investment was literally performed within weeks or a couple of months. So I kind of hinted at this earlier. I love this quote. It's from a vice president of operations or operations director from a large insurance firm. And he says, I'd like to say that Kapow makes it all happen automatically. And heck, if a customer wants to say that, I'm not going to argue uh, with that as a benefit. And um, that's absolutely true. So with that, I've probably only got time uh, for one question. Uh, let's have a look at uh, right. Okay, I've got a question from Adam. Uh, I won't give your surname uh, or company in case uh, you don't want me to. But Adam, thank you very much uh, for the question. Um, it says, "Who should deploy robots?" I guess you mean uh, within an organisation. That's a, that's actually a very good question, Adam. Um, thank you for that. Um, like any new technology trend, uh, unfortunately. Um, everyone likes to get in on the bandwagon um, and you can, if you want to, uh, choose technologies that will be deployed through global management consulting firms or systems integrators. And you can spend hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars or pounds or whatever your chosen currency is to buy the technology and have hundreds and hundreds of days of consultants um, on time to start uh, on site rather uh, to start to deploy uh, this technology. Um, frankly, you just saw me build a robot. Uh, no management consultants were hurt in the building of that robot. I, I actually like to answer this question, Adam, I guess in, in this way. I'd ask you, who in your organization is responsible for build, building your Excel spreadsheets? The answer to that probably is the person that needs the Excel spreadsheet. So I think that the person in your organization or anyone else that's listening on this webinar, uh, the person responsible for building robots in your organization should be the people in the departments that need the robot because they know what they need it to do. And if it's as simple as I've shown you it is, then do you really need a consultant on site charging hundreds or thousands of pounds a day to borrow your watch to tell you the time? No, you don't. You should be able to build robots yourself and deploy them uh, within your organization. Now, I do recommend, and we can talk through this for those of you that, that want to talk in more detail, that you have a center of excellence and, and a governance layer. Um, so I deployed a robot into live, into production. Normally in most organizations, there'd be some 
gatekeeping uh, before that happened, because you'd probably want um, IT involved to make sure that that robot didn't, for example, bring the network down. Or, you know, I built that robot and it merrily assumed that the web page I went to was there and that the Excel spreadsheet that I wanted was available on the network. Well, that's a happy path, but we all know in reality, websites change or networks go down. So what you normally can do is within the same robot, you can start building some error traps. So you could build a step that says, is is the network there? Can I see the spreadsheet? If I can, brilliant, write the file. Is the website there? Yes. Is it still in the same format? Yes, brilliant. Then I'll go about extracting the information. But if not, I can then start alerting users. We've even got customers that have robots uh, that spot errors and traps and then uh, build more robots to go and fix uh, the errors that, that, that they spot. But in answer to your question, Adam, who should deploy robots? I believe it should be your your team uh, and then your team just governing uh, from an IT perspective that that robot getting promoted into live uh, to make sure that it doesn't bring the network down, that it is nice and robust. And perhaps someone from audit is just making sure that that robot perhaps doesn't en uh, empty your bank account. But fundamentally, robotics should be deployed uh, by the people, for the people uh, within your organization. Uh, if you choose the right technology, that's exactly um, uh, who, who it should be. Um, apologies, I've gone on there. I've actually run out of time um, in terms of taking any additional questions. Um, so I'd like to just, uh, I guess, wrap up uh, the webinar with just my observation. I think it was a, a, a famous coach whose name shall remain nameless, made this observation that I'm uh, paraphrasing liberally here. I guess that there are three kinds of people out there. There are those that make it happen. There are those that let it happen. And there are those that uh, wonder what on earth happened. And I guess my question to you at the end of this webinar is which are you? If you're those that want to make it happen, then I'd urge that you uh, try and embrace robotic process automation and understand what it can do for your organization. And even further, <clears throat> I'd encourage you to reach out to me. I'm Tim Miller. My email address is there, tim.miller at twofold.co.uk. My telephone number is 44118951900 from wherever you are in the world. Reach out to me. Think of a couple of processes and go, yeah, all right, yeah, you, you did that demo, but go on, prove it, Tim. Come into my organization and prove that you can build those robots for us. I'd love to. I'd love to have the opportunity to come in and share with you just how economical, how how low cost and how easy this technology is to deploy, because I believe that seeing is believing. Please call or email me now. So with that, with no further ado, I'd like to thank everyone uh, for sharing uh, their time with me uh, during this uh, presentation. Please, if you'd like to, uh, reach out to me uh, for more detailed information about what robotics can do for you. And finally, I'd just like to say that in, in a week or so's time on the 4th of July, and because it's the 4th of July, we're running another webinar uh, called Process Independence Day. If you're interested, please join us on the 4th of July. It's again at 2.30 GMT, where we're going to be digging into far more detail which processes are applicable to automate and looking at this whole technology at a much greater greater and lower level. Please join me on that webinar. But for this, for this afternoon, this morning or the evening session, wherever you are in the world, thank you all very much uh, for your attendance. Um, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much indeed. Goodbye.